Yo guys, it's Shoy. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the basics of trap drums, patterns, and I'm going to be showing you some advanced techniques for more experienced producers. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Make sure you follow this on Instagram for fire loops. And you know, like, comment, subscribe, and let's get into the video. So, first of all, I've got my loops and I've got my all my sounds here labelled. So let's start with um so this is a loop, first of all. So for trap drums, when it comes to your main clap or your rim shot or whatever, so your main clap here, it's usually the same pattern just like this you know on on your second you know very simple just pattern in general that is used in every single trap song you will ever hear any beat any song you'll most likely hear this this clap main rim sometimes it's a rim sometimes it's a clap but it's always the same pattern then you have your your second snare or your like second percussion that would sound something like this now there's quite the most like the hot spots for percussion here is usually here, 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 and just like this, so it repeats. Usually, nine times out of ten, most songs will hit these spots. You'll hear it in most songs, so. You can already hear it, it's right there. But then there's also second spots that they hit, which may sometimes be here. Now that might sound quite weird right now, but... That's also something you hear really often, usually you hear it more of perks, but I'll talk about that later on. And then un also another hot spot, it's not really a hot spot but quite a lot of people do use it sometimes to put their snares is right before the clap. So like if I was to use that in a beat so it's something like this, me using these spots. So as you can see I use the combination of the spots, I use the one for the clap and your main spots to just come up with a snare rhythm. But the snares are usually quite simple, it doesn't really change apart from that. You will sometimes get snare rolls, stuff like this, so usually you want to go into the third step and I click N for the paint tool and you might hear stuff like this. play with the velocities when you do stuff like this so it sound a little bit that sounds good so I'll just keep that like that then next you have your hi-hats which pretty much always stick to each two steps Sometimes you can do f each four steps, usually in more emotional beats like rod wave beats or little dark. Sometimes four step is good because it gives it more space, especially since the tempo is really high.
but for now we're just going to stick with each two steps and for hi-hat rolls i'm going to talk about that in a second after we do the 808 so for 808 we're going to go into here and we're going to work in these three bars right now so like this so let's turn it up so we can hear it I, they'll always hit here. These two places will always hit. The first will always hit. So. That will always hit no matter what. Though very rarely you will not see these spots hit. Second of all, another spot that's commonly hit is here and here. As you can see, you, c you can already hear it just get the same wing key. As you can hear it. Another spot that's hit quite a lot is right here and here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to color these. So white's your main and then we'll do blue for the second spot so here and here you'll you'll know this trap pattern a hundred percent you'll hear it everywhere you're you can already hear it you know you know it so you have that there's also other spots that are hit and those spots are usually so we've go with this pink colour. Those spots are usually here and here. Again, you can hear it. You can also do stuff like take this out and just keep it there. Keep that there. So you hear that in quite a lot quite a lot of Pyrex beats. You hear this note just hitting by itself without a note here so that's really common but really common in certain genres but most of the time it's usually just the this this pattern here that you hear a lot another place where you can also hear 808s hit quite a lot is well quite rarely to be honest is here here. Let's say we take these notes out. Again, you can hear it. But that's usually your spots to hit. But keeping all of this in mind, let's just make a pattern and you see what I mean. There we go. Then there's our pattern too. What you also hear quite a lot is people you can put your eight on third beat. Zoom in, in here. You can do stuff like this, which is 808 rolls. You hear this roll pretty commonly. So let's listen. You can already hear it. You can hear it in so many songs. Like you hear this pattern a lot. I mean, this is a go to pattern. I use it all the time. It's, it's amazing. Trust me. Like, one third step 808 rows are a blessing. One third step for the faster ones like these. These. 
and yeah that's that's what i've got to say for 808 and just rewind the video if you want to look at the hot spots that i've plotted with the different colors but we'll keep that as our highlight pattern right now next is open hat so your main open hat depends on the type of trap beat but like most generic trap beats usually have them hit with the 808 so But then, in some other beats, they might hit on the second, so the one and. One and. Or they can hit there. Now, for this beat, since I'm going to just make it a generic trap beat, I'm just going to keep it here. On, on these notes right here, like this. And I'm just going to copy it. But to make it less repetitive, I'm going to take out this note that open hat and just paste it again to select it just click control drag and then control b so now you can also do stuff like this and you just lower the velocity so Or you just put it right before the 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 L8. So but I quite like that so I'm just gonna do it just like that. So for a reverse hat there's two main spots. If you have an 808 hitting the here like that. I wouldn't put a reverse hat here. This is a hot spot for reverse hats, but I wouldn't put a reverse hat here if you have an AOA hat right like that, because it, it won't sound very good, it would just sound very busy and clustered, and you usually want the reverse hat to lead up into your main clap, or rim, or snare, depending on what it is. So, something like this. You hear that? Another place to put your your um reverse hat is here before the second clap. So But I've got a snare right before that clap, so more we'll make a, a cleaner not explain this, a cleaner reverse hat all the way through with nothing in between it. So it sounds a lot better than if say the snare was there, so like this. Sounds a lot better than that because of that snare. So for this beat, I'm just gonna put them on the second like that. There, control B. Now we're on the perk. For your perk, it can depend. So you can keep the same spots as a snare. You can go crazy with your perks. Not too crazy though, because if you had too many perks, it would just sound really bad. But for example, like here, you can put up two perks. These two spots are usually quite popular. Spots like this are popular as well. Or right after. But you get perks and stuff like that, or you just really have to listen. There's not really a specific pattern like for snares or it waits. You just have to listen. So, I'm um, for this beat. I'm just gonna put them see here. Yeah, every five bars. Now for hi hats. For hi hats, I recommend working in three bars because you want it to be repetitive but not too repetitive. So now for this beat, I'm just gonna be either working third step, second step, or six feet, fourth beat as well. But this is what I usually stick to. So let's go to second step. So usually you can have your rolls hit when your 808 hits. So. And make sure you play for velocity, so like let's fade it in. 
high hats is really a thing where you just have to watch like what i recommend is how i got better my high hats is just watching other people do them and just really looking at what they do because again it's a quite subjective thing for to sit and talk about all the different things you could do for hats i'd be sitting and talking for absolutely ages but two step most beats have the two step and you just want to place roles and i just recommend watching youtube videos on people making beats and stuff like that and talking about how they do their roles because it's really subjective in my opinion so i'm just gonna do these hi-hats Now this is a role that I like doing a lot, 6 step and go to 6 beat, just fade it. A wee bit more, more like that and then. You can hear that, it sounds pretty good. And then and control P. Now copying this over and over again for your whole nine bars would sound kind of repetitive and boring. So what I recommend doing is just changing up your notes or maybe taking out a hi hat or do or take out a roll or change a roll. Like let's say lower this roll a bit. And let's see how that sounds. And then let's just add a little roll here and take that out. And let's just see how that sounds. As you can see it doesn't sound too repetitive because you're changing the, the notes about but it's not random either like there's something to it there's something that your brain hears repeating even if you don't really notice it immediately but in the back of your brain it's repeating and it does create bounce trust me and then really that's it for trap bar patterns if you want me to do a video on arranging or mixing i'll do that as well but for trap patterns that's really all there is to it the biggest ones are your 808s your claps and snares and percussions really stay the same but your 808s and your hi-hats are the most subjective things like for that i really recommend just watching other people make beats and you'll get the hang of it eventually but i'll finish this beat out and i'll arrange it and then i'll let you listen to it yeah. Damn, Deuce. Charlie, you 